So this year, Smart Grid uh, Catalyst and TMF Telemanagement World in this 2013 is really a, a partnership between champions this year with Salzburg, which is a city in Austria, but also actually a utility, Cisco Systems. And the reason for that was that we wanted to um, have a pretty real deployment case of Smart Grid to hang our coats on. The uh, city of Salzburg is planning a smart deployment to over IPv6 architecture from the Cisco systems in the field area network. And that is actually the plan, and the rollout will happen in 2014 2015. Uh, so it's not there just yet, but it's about to actually take place. And the plans are already uh, uh, sort of beginning to be executed. Uh, these champions, though, made it also clear that it was the, 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 it would be desirable, desirable to see other things added to the smart grid deployment as an example of components important to smart grids in general. So, therefore, the participants, the vendors here, uh, added their perspectives on different components. And these are all existing solutions in the smart grid industry today, so it's not really futures. Uh, InfoNova is, is demonstrating digital service orchestration, the meaning how you actually set up and build people correctly when things actually get turned on in terms of smart grid services. Uh, Base and our company, we are, we are providing cloud-based IP and ICT fault performance monitoring as well as energy monitoring as well, directly off sort of the electricity and homes, etc. Uh, CSG and Intel provide an important perspective of end-to-end -end security in the smart grid. And not only how you actually build for security when you set the smart grid up, but actually how you actually deal with the threats coming in and when actually somebody does done something malicious into the smart grid, how do you stop it and how do you repair after that? Very important perspective as well. TOA finally uh, offered to demonstrate orchestrated field service and workforce management, meaning really to make sure that the wrong people don't take the wrong truck and drive to the wrong place at the wrong time to, to do maintenance work, etc. But this is an automated solution where you can dynamically track people in a mobile fashion instead. So these are all part of the catalyst and each team is showcasing and giving a short presentation and actually doing demos as well. This is a picture of a smart grid infrastructure for those who really don't know what that is at all and some people in the telco world actually don't. Yeah, but we assume that we all know that right now. The opportunity, why is TMF into this smart grid area at all? Well, a lot of the smart grids being deployed uh, really involves using network technology and the technology was really predominantly before more common in the pure IP type carrier networks and large enterprise networks and data centers and so on. Uh, it's sort of therefore natural that a lot of the TMF membership companies uh, are well suited for actually leveraging their knowledge and their technology into smart grids. And the other key piece of this is uh, TMF is probably, if it's one of the best things it's ever done for the service provider and carrier world and its vendors is to define a common language, the common framework for what do we call components and type of functionalities within this kind of system, so OSS, BSS. And that's actually that the standards and best practices and, and sort of uh, dictionaries that people now use in the industry is making it much easier to build and deploy solutions within the sort of this service provider and carrier world and large enterprise world. While the utility space has traditionally had very few successful standards efforts that actually led to any streamlining of products that can actually talk to each other at all. With smart grid coming, bringing in a whole new set of products into the into the mix of old utility products and legacy equipment, that situation gets even messier. So one of the things that TMF can probably bring to the table and its members is to see if we can actually help replicate a best practices efforts, a framework effort that was done in sort of the service provider world, also for the utility world. And there's going to be some work there, but that's sort of why we are in this game. This team came together, and the participating companies came together, and we started to actually outline together what we think are key areas for a smart grid infrastructure, so key technology areas. To sort of just map that out was probably a really useful exercise, especially for TM Forum. 
general, smart building, things like home commercial smart meter systems, things like command and control systems for cross-platform and smart grid. Uh, of course, the IP network angle on this, routing and switching devices, PicoCells, IPv4 versus IPv6 stuff, network backhaul infrastructure, etc., etc. Cloud computing is big here too. That's sort of what makes the communications traffic for a smart grid, which wasn't there in place with all utilities before at all, allowing us now to know more what's actually going on in the grid and allowing users and consumers to have a better picture of what's actually going on with their electricity consumption, for example. Power network and associated equipment, of course, this is the utility sector, so that still resides at the core of what's being on here. This is a power production, actually, network, so that's, that's a given. Security systems to make sure that people don't do malicious things with this is probably even a higher concern in a utility, a smart grid, a power grid, than it is even in the communications network that deals with video, for example. This is much more serious stuff we're talking about now, power generation, etc., and much more fragile if somebody actually does something bad. Standards and compliances are important, I mentioned that already. I, um, we're not saying that smart grids are going to be the only type of digital services going into the homes in the end, no. Uh, digital services providers, carriers moving in to sort of become smart grid providers are probably in the parallel going to provide other types of services. Be that, you know, internet or TV or other things, video, maybe e-health services into the home as well. And that should be given some clear thought in terms of when you define the deploy our infrastructure for actually deploying these services. It shouldn't be totally separate and purpose-built things that trample on each other. We also took a look at, as separate from the infrastructure pure functionality areas, uh, what are the sort of the business challenges, the key business drivers for this area? and what might trigger some thinking around business models for whomever want to become a digital services providers here. Clearly today it's very popular to be green, there's a very strong green theme, people want to save energy, people want to you know, consume less of natural resources, things like that. You also want to sort of have your own solar panel to some degree, a windmill maybe, a lot of more people are buying electrical cars, etc., to save the environment. There's an expectation that I can have much more dynamic pricing based on what I'm actually producing locally. If I pump and power something from my solar panel, I actually want the diff there to actually go down in the bill that I pay the utility at the same time, pretty much real time. Uh, customer experience is another key. Ex Sometimes this is an afterthought, and we have very great examples already today in market deployments that have paid attention to the customer experience area and been quite successful, but while other utilities in the same state, in California for example, didn't do that, and with the same technology you had very disastrous results in terms of people not accepting the smart meters and in some cases actually, actually asking them to be taken out again. Uh, so this is a very important area for smart grids to be uh, successful. From a uh, framework perspective, I mentioned this a little bit before, we would say that all the members here, and even in this year's Catalyst, have to some degree some kind of adherence to uh, standards, best practices, and that's defined by TMF simply because we are TMF members, but it's still in its infancy. Uh, this is not to say that we have already accomplished to sort of create that lexicon for utilities or frameworks. So that's actually going to be a project that runs now for maybe two or three years before it's done. And we have a big technical report and a version of this which we can call the Applied Frameworks for Smart Energy Management. But it's going to be a sort of separate exercise that runs in parallel with the, with the, uh, the Smart Grid Catalyst as they evolve. And I think that's it from this in terms of Smart Grid Catalyst, and we'll see you next time.